Hemophilia is almost always inherited. It is passed down in the genes, more specifically, the X chromosome. Both men and women have 23 pairs of chromosomes. On the 23rd chromosome, women have two X chromosomes, while men have only one X and one Y chromosome. Since males have just one X chromosome, it only requires one defective X chromosome for him to acquire hemophilia. Females, on the other hand, have the advantage of possessing two X chromosomes. Therefore, both X chromosomes must contain the hemophilia gene in order for a female to become hemophiliac. If only one is defective, the healthy chromosome overpowers the defective one and leads to her simply becoming a carrier. When a gene exists but does not appear as a physical characteristic, it is called a genotype. This is what occurs with carriers. When it is expressed physically, it is called a phenotype. Female carriers are still susceptible to having bleeding problems, but for the most part, the healthy X chromosome is capable of producing enough clotting factors for bleeding to clot properly. In order for a female to be born with hemophilia, her father and mother must carry the hemophilia gene. This is not impossible, but is uncommon. This explains why hemophilia tends to be much more common in males. Although rare, hemophilia can also be acquired from a genetic mutation. In this case, a child could be born a hemophiliac, regardless of the fact that neither parent is a carrier. It is also possible for hemophilia to develop after birth. The blood may spontaneously produce antibody that blocks the clotting factors from working, leading to acquired hemophilia. People who are pregnant or suffer from an autoimmune disease, such as rheumatoid arthritis or cancer, are at higher risk to develop acquired hemophilia. This is also known to emerge in people with no risk factors, making it a very unpredictable and therefore dangerous disorder. If it is not properly diagnosed and treated in time, acquired hemophilia can lead to serious bleeds, which could become fatal.